All right, hey everyone. So this is a video about um, kinematics. And kinematics um, is a very heavily tested subject, whether that be in physics or on the MCAT. And then something I've noticed is a lot of people who take the MCAT struggle with physics. And so kinematics is probably one of the places where a lot of students struggle because it's not something um, a lot of bio biologists are used to seeing, but it is nonetheless important. So let's let's go ahead and approach this problem uh, and see where we go. So it says the following is the velocity versus time graph for a red blood cell flowing through a vein. What is false regarding this velocity versus time graph? So this is the graph I think uh, the question is referring to. I mean, I drew it, so yes, it is what it's referring to. And you'll see that on the y-axis we have velocity and on the x-axis we have time. Okay, and so now let's investigate all four answer choices, uh, all five answer choices. It says the acceleration between times two and three is about constant. The net displacement is positive. Um, at between times T3 and T4, the velocity and acceleration of the red blood cell are increasing. Uh, between times one and two, uh, the velocity and acceleration of the red blood cell are increasing. And after T4, the velocity and acceleration are decreasing. So remember the question is asking which of these is false. And whenever you have questions like this, you want to go through each answer choice and see what is actually false. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do the step by step. So let's look through A first. Uh, the first answer choice says the acceleration between times t2 and t3 is about constant. So how do we know if that's right? Because this is velocity, right? This is velocity. If you look at the y-axis, velocity. Um, how the heck do you find out anything about acceleration from a graph that's velocity versus time? Well, one thing I'm going to ask you to remember is that acceleration is basically the derivative of velocity. In other words, if you take the derivative of the velocity versus time graph, uh, you get acceleration. But what is the derivative? The derivative is basically saying the slope of the tangent line. Okay, um, and so let's let's let me show you what that means. So the velocity at time t two, right at this point right here, is going to be equal. I mean, is going to be equal to whatever the graph shows us. So in this case, the velocity at time t two is right here, right t two. But what is the acceleration at T2? The acceleration is given by the slope at that point. So if we draw a line to that point, you get about this, this um, acceleration. And the slope of that line is, I mean, the, the slope of that line is basically the um, derivative. Okay, and the, the answer choice A is saying the acceleration between times two and t2 and t3, the acceleration between these two times is about constant. So how do we evaluate the validity of that claim? So let me erase my line really quick. So this is the slope of the tangent line in T2, right? But now if we keep moving down, we'll, we can examine the slope of the tangent line between T2 and T3 right here. And let's see what that is. If you look at that slope, that too is equal to the slope that was at T2. Now let's look at the slope at T3. What does that slope look like? And even that slope looks very similar to the slope that was at T2 uh, and also in between T2 and T3. So you'll see that the slope of all three is about equal. And if the slope between all three points is about equal, then the slope of the tangent line at T2 is equal to the slope of the tangent line at T3, about, right? Uh, and that's what the thing is saying. And if the slope of the tangent line is equal, then you can say the acceleration at time T2 is about equal to the acceleration of time T3. And therefore, you can conclude that A is a true statement. So A is right, and so we can move on. So guys, because that's not going to be our answer, because A is a true statement. The next one says the net displacement is positive. So displacement, displacement is your change in x, okay? So this is a velocity versus time graph, right? I always like to draw it in just to remind myself. So this is velocity versus time. But how do you find the displacement from a velocity versus time graph? The displacement, which is the delta x, is given by the integral of the velocity versus time graph. And you might be thinking, do we need to new, do any calculus on the MCAT explicitly? No, you don't. Um, but you do need to know the concepts uh, theoretically. And the integral of a velocity versus time graph is just the area under the curve. Okay, The area under the curve um, is basically the integral of any graph. So if the integral of a velocity versus time graph is basically the area under the curve, and if you look at the area here, I'm going to shade it in nice, nicely. 
even though you don't know how to calculate the area of this graph, what you can probably say with reasonable certainty is that this area is positive because look at where it is. It's in the first quadrant, right? It's in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, the times are obviously all going to be positive, and the velocities are clearly all positive, and therefore the area, whatever the area is, even if you don't know the exact number, you do know that it's positive. And if the area under the curve is positive, then delta x has to be positive, and therefore the net displacement, which is delta x, has to be positive. And so um, I think the main point here is anytime you're asked about displacement from a velocity versus time graph, you always want to think about area under the curve. When you're asked about acceleration, as was uh, our answer choice A, you want to look at the slope of the tangent line. And so with that, you can see that the displacement is positive and B is also right. So B is not going to be the right answer because B is the true statement. What about C? C says, between times T3 and T4, the velocity and the acceleration of the red blood cell uh, are increasing. So let's ev evaluate that. First of all, we can evaluate velocity. Between times T3 and T4, what is happening to the velocity? If you look at the velocity at t3, I'm going to just go back here and draw. This is the velocity at t3, right? Um, this is the velocity. I'm going to read write that in. Velocity at t3, right there. Now, what's the velocity at t4? The velocity at t4 is about up here, and that's the velocity at t4, and therefore that is right. The velocity is increasing. I agree. I'm going to check. That's a check mark. But what about the acceleration? What about the acceleration between t3 and t4? The acceleration at t3 is going to be equal to the slope of the tangent line. Right? The slope of the tangent line at t3. And let's look at the slope uh, at t3. The slope is like this. Right? That's approximately the slope. If, if you were to draw a line, you could approximate the slope there. And then at t4, the slope of the tangent line, which will give us the acceleration at t4, is exactly horizontal. I I debate that the slope at t4 is almost zero, right? The slope is almost zero. On the other hand, the slope at t3 is positive, right? The slope at t3 is positive, and therefore uh, the acceleration between t3 and t4 is not increasing. The acceleration um, between t3 and acceleration at t4 is decreasing, right? And therefore, this is actually false. Even though the velocity between t3 and t4 is increasing, the acceleration is decreasing, and c would be our answer because c is false. But just for the sake of completeness, let me go through d. d says, uh, between times t1 and t2, the velocity and acceleration of the red blood cell are increasing. So it's the same thing that was mentioned in t3 and t4, but now we're doing it at t1 and t2. So let's evaluate t1 and t2. At t1, at t1, here's the velocity. The velocity at t1 is here. The velocity at t2 is like over there, right? Right there. So do you agree that the velocity is increasing? Yes, because the velocity at t2 is greater than the velocity at t1. So I agree that the velocity is increasing. So we can check that off. That's a bad check. We'll check that off. But what about the acceleration? Okay, so the acceleration at t1 is going to be equal to the slope of the tangent line at t1. And the slope of the tangent line at t1, I'd say that the slope is about zero, right? And if the slope is zero, um, then the acceleration at t1, I'd say, is about zero. But now let's look at the acceleration at t2. What is that like? Let's look at the slope of the tangent line at t2. All right, the slope of the tangent line is pretty, it's, I mean, we don't know exactly what it is, but for sure I can tell that it's positive, right? And if the slope of the tangent line is positive, then the acceleration at t2 is greater than the acceleration at t1, and therefore, the acceleration is also increasing, and therefore, the D is correct. So just to make sure we're, we were right, uh, we know that C was our false statement, but uh, it, it reinforces the fact that C was false because D is true. And last but not least, let's evaluate E. E says, after T4, the velocity and acceleration are decreasing. So let's make sure of that. At T4, the velocity is right here. Let me draw it like that. So this is the velocity at T4. And then what happens to the velocity after t4? Let me just go all the way to the last data point. This is velocity like at t5. Let's just say this is t5. 
you know, let's say this is t. So I, the velocity at t5 is definitely lower than the velocity at t4. And therefore, the velocity is decreasing. That's true. But what about the acceleration? The acceleration at t4, remember, we've already done this before. The acceleration at t4 is equal to the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line is about 0, right? The slope of the tangent line is about 0. And therefore, the acceleration is about 0. Uh, but what about the acceleration after t4? Any point, pick any point after t4 and draw, uh, draw the tangent line to it. Any point after t4, you'll notice is negative, is less than 0, right? And so the acceleration at any time after t4 is less than 0, and therefore the acceleration after t4 has to be less than the acceleration at t4, and therefore the acceleration is also decreasing. And so this is correct. And so if we go back to the original question, the answer uh, is actually c. So let's go back to the original question. So here is the original question. And remember, we said that the answer here, out of all of them, we evaluated the answer that was false was C. And that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, got a lot out of it. This can't tell you how many times kinematics will show up on the MCAT or even just in a normal physics class. And understanding it, understanding the relationship between velocity, displacement, and acceleration is absolutely imperative. And uh, so I really hope you got something out of this. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you can, uh, and see you guys in the next video.